Hey yo, everybody, Zach Gords here with RevZilla and welcome to another episode of Daily Rider where we learn about motorcycles as we ride. On today's show, Honda's Rebel 500. So this machine shares an engine with the CBR500R, CB500X, and CB500F from Honda. Also shares a name and some styling with the Rebel 300 and Rebel 1100. In other words, plenty to talk about, about how it fits into Honda's lineup and how it relates to all those other bikes. But perhaps most importantly, is it a good daily rider? Time to hit the road, everybody. Let's go. All right, everybody, almost time to go. But before we do, a friendly reminder. This episode of Daily Rider is brought to you by Quadlock. Quadlock makes mobile device cases, chargers, and mounts for every vehicle we cover on Daily Rider and many more. More importantly, Quadlock supports Daily Rider, which means for every Quadlock product you buy at RevZilla.com, uh, Daily Rider gets to spruce up the leaderboard or uh, at least keep gas in our tanks. <laughs> so to learn more about uh, what Quadlock offers, you can click on the link in the description of this video or in the tag in the upper right corner. All right, everybody, it's Rebel time. Let's get down to business here. <clears throat> this is the 471cc parallel twin at the heart of the Rebel 500. Uh, 180 crank. So sometimes you talk about 180 crank versus 270 crank, and that's a orientation and firing order of... Um, the crankshaft and the pistons inside the engine there. So this one is a 180 crank, a little more traditional historically, um, similar to uh, a Kawasaki Ninja 650, a Yamaha R3, something like that, um, as opposed to a 270 crank, which gives you a little bit more of a V-twin kind of feel and sound, um, a la Honda Africa Twin or uh, Triumph Street Twin or uh, Yamaha MT-07. <laughs> Um, so yeah, quick rundown of the engine there. We'll talk more about how that performs as we ride, of course. Uh, right side up fork, uh, big beefy 130 section front tire. It's pretty wide. Single Nissan caliper and single rotor. We'll talk more about brakes as we ride as well. Other than that, pretty basic um, architecture here, right? You got a basic steel tube frame, uh, mid controls. Not a lot else to it. Just an engine and wheels, basically, which is uh, all good. Key is down on the side. Cruiser style. Let's fire it up, shall we? All right. All right, all right. And it comes in this lovely green color, which I actually really like. Um, and uh, one update, a 2020 update, I think, was LED headlight. So it's got this kind of weird arachnid uh, headlight, but um, works pretty well, I think, and sharp looking, better than the, the old... Uh, halogen one or whatever it was. Okay, do kids. Let's get our rebel on. Away we go. All right, everybody. Let's talk about specs, shall we? It's a quick uh, conversation here on the Rebel 500. Uh, it weighed in on the daily rider scales at 413 pounds um which is pretty light i would say although uh not really lighter than a i don't know yamaha mt07 something like that has a bigger engine and i think it weighs 407 or something anyway whatever fairly small fairly light bike as far as the seat height that is 27.2 inches you can see i've got a very significant bend in my leg sitting at a traffic light here it is very low um, uh, yeah, I often point out that the Honda Grom, which is a 125cc mini moto from Honda, has a 30 inch seat height, so it is very approachable, this uh, Rebel 500, and that's nice. Uh, the tank looks kind of small, and it is kind of small, uh, 2.9 gallons of gas in the Rebel 500. Um, and yeah, the price, I didn't even mention the price yet. Ugh, what an idiot. Uh, you'd think I'd be better at this by now. $6,400 for the Rebel 500, which is, um, you yeah, know, not too bad for a, for a capable little cruiser, as we'll find out. All right. Go, Rebel, go. <laughs> all right, all right. As for horsepower and torque numbers, I don't think Honda actually claims anything, but I believe 
pretty agreed upon. It's about 50 horsepower, memory serves. I'm totally pulling that off the top of my head. 47 or 49, I want to say, as someone dynoed. Not a hugely powerful engine, but enough to uh, get up and go, as we'll see as the ride continues here. As for basic ergonomics, uh, how the bike feels to sit on and how it interacts with your body, it uh, is quite good. It is also very approachable. Um, it's, uh, it's a very compact riding position. And uh, so I think for smaller riders, it'll fit quite well. And uh, if you're much over six feet, you're gonna probably feel a little bit mini bikey on it. Okay, it's taken us a minute to get up to speed here on the open road. But now here we go, we're 65, 70 miles an hour, cruising down the freeway on the Rebel 500. And I gotta say, it's pretty good about this. I had um, more questions on my Instagram post about, uh, you know, could I use this bike for light touring? You know, I'm not talking about riding around the world, but just like, you know, weekend trips and that kind of thing. Yeah, I think so, for sure. Uh, you're gonna want to make sure that the riding position fits you, as I sort of alluded to before. But in general, the engine's totally up for it. I mean, it's just sort of loping along uh, at this speed. Uh, how fast is the engine spinning, you ask? Nobody knows. But despite the lack of tachometer, it's, a, it's an easy enough engine to get used to and it does not feel particularly buzzy, especially for a, a, a fairly small engine uh, on the highway at this speed. And the roll-on power, if you're going 75 and you want to go faster than that, we'll go wide open here for a second. It's, you know, 80, 85, and it didn't happen, didn't happen amazingly quickly, but it's got plenty of get up and go to trot down the freeway if that's what you want to do. The other thing you might want to sort out uh, for long distance travel or any kind of uh, even, you know, short weekend trips and that kind of thing would be the seat. I don't think it's particularly good for long distances. Uh, and I imagine there are some aftermarket options that are a little bit thicker, a little more plush. And keep in mind, you can get a, a quite a bit thicker seat and not sacrifice a whole lot of uh, approachability from a seat height standpoint because the seat's so low to begin with. Uh, I, would, I would probably make that upgrade if I owned this bike. Uh, because after, I don't know, 45 minutes or so, I start to get pretty tired of this saddle. We usually talk about fuel mileage in this section of road, and I didn't do the math. I remember I got 135 miles out of uh, a tank, and uh, the little fuel light came on at 117, I think. Um, so range is not super excellent. Uh, and I think I put 2.6 something gallons of gas in it. And I'll have to, we'll have to do that math at a stoplight or something like that. Uh, but anyway, you can expect a little more than 100 miles out of a, a tank of fuel. Uh, so yeah, for travel, you're gonna wanna plan out your gas stations pretty, pretty uh, accurately. <laughs> uh, but as far as riding around the city, get, uh, plenty of days commuting depending on how long your commute is and it's not so bad last but not least in this section is mirrors and uh, the old mirrors on the rail 500 are pretty good um, they start to get a little buzzy if you want to go like you know 80 or something like that um, but in general quite smooth and very stylish match the aesthetic of the bike quite nicely in my opinion I wish they stuck out maybe two inches more. I think I get a slightly better view that way, but I get it. It's a, you know, they want the, the mirrors to be kind of tight and, and keep the the uh, cockpit compact and and uh, have the bike looking sharp. So I guess I can't blame them for that. Alrighty, I think we're just about done with this red light, right? Right? Red light? Yeah. And we're off in to the neighborhood to test the Rebel 500's urban manners. And of course the old stop sign challenge. I haven't done a lot of stop sign uh, tests here and try and get uh, to a zero miles an hour on the speedo without putting our feet down. Unlike what that car just did. Yeah, that's, that's, whoa, 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 whoa. a little clutch feel problems there. The person behind me probably <laughs> thinks that I'm DUI in here or something. So yeah, clutch feel is not super excellent. Um, it's a, uh, it's, very light the, the pull of the clutch lever is very light um, and I'm not saying this is there's a direct relationship 
here, but I would prefer that the clutch feel, the clutch pull was a little heavier and I just had slightly better feel. Sometimes the, the Ninja 400 from Kawasaki suffers from kind of a similar thing. I, I sometimes feel like the clutch pull is so light. It's just, it's hard to, to, to get a taste for it. But the more you ride the bike, the more it comes around. It's not a huge deal, but it is something I noticed when I hopped on. In general, the Rebel 500 is exceedingly polite and easy to use around town. The on-off fueling uh, isn't perfect, but it's pretty good. And the, the seat height is so low that if you do need to reach for the ground, it's right there. Um, and the engine dynamic and character is really easy to use. It's gentle, uh, but there's enough pep to get out of the way of traffic if you need to. It's a, it's a really, really, really agreeable and pleasant bike to, to ride around an urban or a suburban environment, 100%. Oh, I, I messed that one up. I had to put my foot down. But uh, I didn't have to reach very far, did I? Lover's Lane, where we talk about passenger accommodations and the Rebel rides alone, everybody. No uh, passenger seat on the Rebel 500. I did get a lot of questions on Instagram about riding two up on this bike, and there were certainly suggestions that there were aftermarket options to put a passenger seat on this bike. I did not do a whole lot of research on that front. Uh, so sorry about that, but I will say that a bike this size and of this style is typically not very good for uh, a passenger, unless you have a sissy bar back there. Um, even cruisers, even small Harleys and Indians, when they have a passenger seat, a lot of times the seat's kind of sloped back or it's just a little perch. It doesn't have a lot of um, uh, infrastructure back there to support a passenger and to, to sort of, uh, yeah, keep them on board. They're going to have to hold on pretty tight and that kind of thing. Plus, uh, bikes like this often don't have a whole lot of rear suspension travel. The Rebel 500 here has 3.8 inches, I believe, of uh, rear suspension, which is pretty good considering, uh, but still not great in the grand scheme of motorcycling. And I don't think a bike like this is ultimately going to be super comfortable for a passenger. Right, dipping into the twisties here on the daily router route. And um, you might not think that the Rebel 500 was particularly inspiring or good at this kind of riding. And you'd be right. It's, uh, I mean, it's fine. I, don't let me, I'm not trying to say that it's bad or scary or unwieldy or anything like that. It's just, um, you know, it, it's pretty balanced for having that big front tire I was pointing out earlier on there. It, it doesn't take too much effort to, to turn in or to sort of hold a, hold a curve. Uh, but uh, the thing that it does that I dislike the most is when you leaned over and you hit a bump and it, it kind of, it'll get a little twisted up and, and wobble a little bit. And it's not unstable by any stretch of the imagination. It's not going to, um, you know, it's not going to sort of fly out of control in the middle of a corner uh, at all. It's just not going to inspire you, especially if you are uh, a new rider, newish rider, to, um, to to sort of take curves at speed. And I suppose if you're into taking curves at speed, you might not really be interested in a Rebel 500 anyway, but them's the notes. Whoa! Almost hit the guardrail there. Probably looking at your phone, huh? One thing I did want to point out uh, that I haven't mentioned thus far is the engine case. Do you see how it sticks out? A little bit. Um, I, I sometimes notice it hitting my my right ankle, uh, and it's not it's not in the way of the foot peg or anything like that. Um, but this is something I noticed, and I noticed that the engine has a lot of clearance on the left side, and I think it's a little bit odd that it's asymmetrical like that. Um, like I said, it's not uh, it's not a huge issue, but uh, but it does stick out right next to the to the foot peg. So this little case cover on the side of the engine, I think you'll find yourself using that a fair amount. For what it's worth. Off we go. Okay, the old rev limiter. In general, the engine in the Rebel 500 I don't find to be particularly inspiring. Uh, I, I, I don't get a real kick out of it when I rev it up. Uh, it doesn't really tickle my fancy, you might say. Uh, but it's very utilitarian. It does the job, absolutely. It's it's not, uh, there's nothing wrong with the performance. The power is nice and linear. Uh, I just don't particularly like the sound. It doesn't really have a lot of character, uh, I don't think. <laughs> um, 
so it's it's a good engine to use in this platform and the the cb500f we mentioned the cb500x we mentioned the cbr500 like it works well in all those applications because it's so kind of versatile but uh i don't i don't know it doesn't make me giggle like some other engines do Alrighty, we got a red light. We can talk about the dash, right? Uh, dash is very simple. You got your time at the top, you got your speed in big letters here, and you got your gear position indicator over here, which is nice. Fuel gauge at the bottom, and then it's a green light. <laughs> uh, and then this middle piece of information here I have set up to show trip A, because that's what I use to calculate fuel mileage. And you can cycle through some of this stuff. So I think you tap, uh, what is it, this button over here? Yeah. So you can do trip A, trip B, uh, I think average fuel economy, odometer, that kind of stuff is in there. But in general, very simple. My big complaint about the dash is that it's not particularly easy to read, um, especially if the sun hits it just right, and sort of like ambient light is a certain way, it's a little hard to see. Uh, it's very, you know, it's stylish, it's slick. It's small and round and retro and clean and, and simple, and I appreciate those things, but I wish the contrast was a little higher. Right, another red light, so we can talk about uh, the dash a little bit more. So yeah, this, these buttons on top are the ones that cycle through uh, those uh, little pieces of information there. Let's see, we've already talked about the dash. Let's, uh, let's calculate that fuel mileage. So it was 135.7 miles, I remember that. And I don't remember the exact amount of gas, it was 2.6 something that I put in there. 52 point two okay so uh yeah low 50s i think that's probably a little unflattering for the rebel 500 i think i probably i think you should expect to get slightly better mileage than that but that's the data that's what i saw so uh you've got the information uh i think i wouldn't be surprised to see 60 or even 65 miles to the gallon especially if you were uh putting around surface streets this kind of thing and not riding it on the highway as much as i did off we go all right yellow light red light let's slam on the brakes shall we brakes are pretty good you do have to clamp on the the lever to get the front to really bite uh but i think it's it's tuned gently or, or in a uh, to to provide gentle brake feel, and I think for a for a bike, um, you know, designed for for people who might be less experienced on a motorcycle, I don't think the the calibration is out of whack, and it's got ABS, so you know if you really need to stop, just uh, slam it on there, and the computer will have your back, which is nice. So as we head for our dirt road shortcut. Uh, I did want to discuss the other Honda models that I mentioned to get to Rebel 300, which is a little sibling to this bike, which we'll talk about a little bit more at the end of the show. And the Rebel 1100, which uses the Africa Twin um, engine, basically in its larger version of this bike in style. Uh, both good bikes. I did get a bunch of questions about the other CBs, the CBR500, the CB500F, and the CB500X, um, and people wanted to know which one I preferred. I would go with the CB500X because it suits me. I like the versatility. I've ridden it off-road and, and on little trails and stuff like that. And it's not an off-road bike, but um, but it handles it pretty well. And I think it's a, a kind of an underrated motorcycle in general. Um, the CB500F though is one of my sort of all-time favorite bikes to recommend for anyone who wants something basic. I would recommend a CB500F above this, but uh, if you like the style of this, I get it. It's stylish. All right. Time to ride a cruiser down a dirt path thingamajig. And no need to stop and shut off trash control. As there's none of that happening. And here we go. Down our, down our dirt road. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just enough power to spin it up. We got the big balloon tire. It's probably going to be good for riding in the sand. No big deal. I mean, it's not so bad, actually. The suspension really, it's, it's unrefined, but it's not 
bad considering I think I'm more comfortable right now than I would be on a on a Harley 883 iron or something I uh, the, the you know typical Honda it did did pretty good work it's not great but it's not, it's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be all right speaking of as bad as I thought it would be jump time <laughs> oh god oh my god uh, uh, geez. I don't know if I'd recommend that. I don't think I would. It's uh, it's not a, it's not a dirt bike. It's not a jumper, everybody. <laughs> but you know, mid controls, I can kind of get my butt off the seat a little bit and that kind of thing. <laughs> Whew. We survived though. We survived. All right, we got a little straight stretch here. We can see if this thing will do a wheelie. I don't think it's going to be much of one. <laughs> I hit the rev loader eventually. <laughs> that was a bad wheelie though. Uh, not bad little guy you done did it if I could have grabbed a second gear up near the balance point I would have been better off but uh, I wasn't ready for that <laughs> still hot diggity dog rebel 500 wheelie all right can we back it in on the rebel 500 <laughs> a little bit right uh, just dump the clutch um, ABS doesn't like you to do stuff like that uh, you know, not the not the not not the safest thing to do, but you can uh, you can get a little little back in, and uh, them cruiser tires made a nice little chirp, didn't they? Chirp, 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 chirp. That's kind of fun. Alrighty, kids, we survived another daily ride. It's time for a U-turn test on the old Rebel 500. We've only got two parking spaces. We think we're gonna be able to do it. It's a it's a pretty uh it's a pretty agile little fella. I think we might be able to do it. Ooh, two parking spaces tight though. And that person's right up on the line. Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Full lock, feet up. Uh, uh, oh, we're so close. Oh man, man, just over two parking spaces. You know, two, two in a little bit. Uh, that's not too bad. That's really not too bad at all. Uh, the other thing I didn't mention actually, I just realized is uh, ground clearance which I never had an issue with. Never had an issue with. Uh, you can see like I can drag the pegs if I lean over like, but it really is not that big a deal, uh, which is pretty good for a cruiser. You can swing through some twisties and not drag the pegs. Alrighty, and wouldn't you know it, we've got a little, a little sibling here to greet us. And uh, we can compare these bikes a little bit in just a minute. Rebel 3 Hundo, everybody. Let's listen to this engine one more time. Yeah, like I said, uh, it doesn't really do it for me. It doesn't blow my hair back as far as sound or feel, but um, certainly nothing wrong with it. Let's see, is the key in this guy? Chow is. So we can listen to this one uh, in case you're interested. A little single. Uh, same engine as is in the uh, CBR 300 and CRF 300L, et cetera. Um, so there you go, a couple of, couple of Rebels. Um, uh, things to keep in mind, uh, differences between the two, is basically just the engine, uh, which means I end weight. So the, the Rebel 500, I told you 413 pounds on our scales, Rebel 300, 371 pounds on our scales. Um, but ergonomics and fit wise, um, they're going to be basically identical. And last note, of course, is price, which uh, 6,400 bucks for the Rebel 500, 4,700 bucks, I believe, for the Rebel 300. Um, so yeah, a little bit less weight, a little bit less money. Um, and uh, yeah, I think, I think there are a couple of questions regarding the two bikes in the Instagram question. So let's, let's dive in to that. Before I forget, I want to mention, uh, because I don't know if there's an Instagram question about this, and uh, I did see a couple questions about the Rebel 300 versus the 500, uh, as far as which one to get. And I think the 500 is pretty unintimidating. It really, it doesn't do a lot to scare people off, I don't think. And I think if you're interested and you can't decide between the two, the 500 will uh, allow you to have a slightly bigger radius. It has a little bit better get up and go. It'll cruise down the highway at 80 if you want it to, whereas the 300 will be just tapped out going 80. <laughs> and, if you, and if it starts going uphill, it's gonna be less than that. Um, so I think the 500 leaves more room to grow into and, um, and will have you satisfied for a little bit longer. That's my take on it. But 
don't let me talk you out of 300 for being a bad bike, uh, especially if you don't care about um, traveling distances or at that kind of speed. Uh, but I don't know. That's just my my uh, my inclination there for what it's worth. All right. First question is from Mr. Wolford, who asks, after riding the Roll 500, how do you feel about the drivetrain being used in the upcoming Scrambler platform, the CL500? Yes, I don't know a whole lot about the CL500, um, that as of this video being recorded, there isn't a whole lot of information out. But um, I'll say this, I'll reiterate what I said about the, the CBR500 and the CB500X, CB500F. <laughs> uh, the engine will be good for that. It'll be fine. It, it, it's it's very versatile. It's, it's, um, it's a it's a it's a bowl of cheerios you know it's gonna it'll put some calories in your belly and it'll get you uh where you need to go it's not wildly um inspiring i don't think um but as far as for a platform like that like a, a little scrambler 500 i think it'll be i think it'll be perfectly good and i hope that bike is um is cool i think it has a lot of potential next question is from joseph in tilly <laughs> Who asks, most people look back fondly on their first bikes and wish they could have kept them. Will the Rebel elicit the same response? Good question. I like this question a lot. Uh, I think so. Like I said, I'm not inspired by the engine character particularly, but it is a, it's a great little bike. And, and it is, it will deliver you to, to faraway places or nearby places. Uh, it looks great. It, it works well it does all the things a motorcycle should do and i think that if you had a rebel 500 as your first bike you would absolutely look back fondly on it uh, i don't think that you'd be missing out on a lot so yeah for sure next question is from cousin mike um who has thoughts on the rebel 500 versus royal enfield int 650 uh yeah yeah um <laughs> a little bit apples and oranges i think in part because of the riding position and the style of the bike but also because the INT650 really is a retro uh, looking and feeling bike. It really is a, is a, is a sort of a, uh, it takes the, the Triumph Bonneville or Triumph, Triumph Street Twin concept and goes a step further, I think. Uh, whereas the Rebel 500 is a, is a modern powertrain and a modern bike and, and it just sort of has neoclassic looks. Um, Personally, I'd go for the Royal Enfield INT650 because I really, I like the engine a lot in, in the INT650 and I think the, the styling resonates with me more than uh, the, the cruiser uh, style of the, of the Rebel, even though the Rebel's sharp looking. So I would go Royal Enfield, but, you know, I also live in Los Angeles and um, I, I have access to lots of uh, different things, you know, where I'm going with this is if your dealer network is, you know, if your closest Royal Enfield dealer is 850 miles away and you have a Honda dealer close by, I think that would probably <laughs> skew my decision a little bit too. Um, so something to keep in mind. And of course, Hondas have a, an amazing reputation for, for dealer network and reliability and all that stuff, which should not be overlooked. Next question is from Cold Starts Moto, who asks, my dad is aging out of his big Harley Davidson because it's just too heavy. Is this the best downside for an aging rider who must, quote, keep it cruiser? Yeah. Um, is it the best option? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's certainly, I mean, you can go smaller, as we can see here. But I don't know that I would recommend that necessarily. Like I said, especially for an experienced rider, someone who's been riding a big Harley for a while, they just need something smaller. I think this would be a good route to go. I think there are other options uh what are the other options i guess we can talk through them you got your kawasaki vulcan s that's a little bit bigger engine a little bit bigger bike um you got your suzuki uh s40 uh, the right s40 savage boulevard something uh the big like sort of 600 single uh that goes back to the mid 1800s so that's a that's another option i i think um i think this is a good option i don't i don't know that i would i don't know that uh that your dad will be quite as inspired by this bike as he is uh maybe a maybe even a, an indian scout 60 or something that's equally low uh and and perhaps less intimidating than his big harley but still smaller all that said if if you're after basically the least intimidating uh cruiser style bike that you can get yeah this has got to be near the top of the list <laughs> Last question is from CJJ15, who asks, what type of classic deli sandwich would you compare this bike to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so, uh, 
I, I, I think maybe a CB500F might be like peanut butter and jelly. That it's just a it's a it's a it's a it's a classic. It's a it'll do anything, you know. Eat it for breakfast. Eat it for dessert. I, I'm a huge fan of peanut butter and jellies, <laughs> and I'm a huge fan of the CB500F. This is a little more polarizing, I think. Um, I would say this is uh, ham and cheese on wheat with iceberg lettuce, a tomato that's not quite ripe, um, and uh, the cheese is provolone. So it's it's a um, it's a it's a it's a classic. It's a go-to. It's it's a solid deli sandwich, um, but it is it you know you got you, if you don't like ham then you're then you're not really uh, going to be interested in it. And and I'm I'm a person who doesn't eat ham sandwiches because I don't really uh, I don't like ham. More of a more of a turkey fellow myself. Point being, uh, like I said, the cruiser style uh, isn't something that I necessarily uh, along for. And the being over six feet tall the the very compact riding position isn't something that i'm necessarily interested in um but could you could you ever say that a ham and cheese sandwich is a, is a bad option in a deli probably not and i'd say that's the same for the rebel 500 and the rebel 300 to a certain extent all right everybody thank you so much for your instagram questions i had a load of really really good ones i just had to pick a few there thank you so much keep them coming for future episodes uh for now let's put this rebel 500 on the daily rider leaderboard Hey, wait, wait, all right. Welcome inside uh, RevZilla West here. Um, last time, if you are an avid watcher, you'll remember that we had the Dumb and Dumber bike set to go to the Denver RevZilla store. Now we got the CT90 from Alaska and it is getting all crated up to go to uh, the Brooklyn store. Um, so if you're in and around New York City and um, you want to check out the CT90 in person. Keep an eye out for the Rosilla store opening and uh, and uh, yeah, the display. It should be cool. More to the point. We're here at the Daily Rider leaderboard, and we have got a Honda Rebel 500 to put on the board here. So, as a friendly reminder, at the top of the leaderboard here, we got uh, Touareg 660 from Aprilia, Suzuki GSXS 1000 GT Plus, and the Harley Pan America, followed by Tiger Sport 660, MV Agusta, and the BMW S1000 RR. Down here, we got a Honda Navi and a zero FXE. Uh, so what do, we, what, do we, what do we think here? MV Gusta Turismo Veloce, uh, 20 something thousand dollar um, sport touring bike basically. Uh, would I recommend a Rebel 500 instead of that bike? In some cases, yes. However, I often fall back on the sort of, if they're sitting next to each other in a garage, which one am I gonna take? Uh, and is the Rebel 500 a smarter purchase? Mm, yeah, probably. But is it more exciting, more dynamic, more fun, more capable, more advanced, more? No, it's not. Uh, so I don't think I'm gonna put the Rebel 500 above that bike. Uh, BMW S1000 RR, also not super comfortable, same as the Rebel 500, not, not a ultra comfortable bike, but, uh, and the BMW S1000 RR, of course, it's got a lot of technological features, you know? Uh, whereas the Rebel 500 doesn't have anything to offer, really, uh, as far as technology, aside from ABS and turning gasoline into forward motion. So it's a little tricky. Uh, Zero FXE, all electric bike. I loved it. I loved it. But no, Rebel 500 is better. S1000 RR, also no. Rebel 500 is going to go above the S1000 RR um, because realistically, it is more approachable. It is a good, good daily rider. It's solid. As far as the, uh, the archive board here, I might recommend a Rebel 500 over an MT-03. I might do it. CBR 500, ooh, maybe not. Indian FTR, probably not. So we're down in this neighborhood here. Somewhere. Um, anyway, uh, a, a, a pretty good finish, a pretty good bike, as we learned today on the daily ride. Um, I really I enjoyed it. And again, thank you so much for all your Instagram questions. Those were great. I had a lot of fun with them. Uh, and if you need a good, good solid ham and cheese sandwich, look no further than Rebel 500. Thanks again, everybody, for hanging out. Hope you learned something. Hope you had fun. See you next time on Daily Rider. The other thing you're going to want to keep in mind for any kind of distance travel is the seat, which um, is not particularly plush. I mean, it's fine for what it is, but you saw the way it looked. It sort of looks like a little 
uh, you know, overcooked piece of pasta sitting down there. A little cup of <laughs> padding that sits on the notch of the... Hey, what am I talking about? <clears throat>